It's Thursday, July 13th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski with the latest local news, including footage of the damage caused by a fire in downtown Bethel. Donald Lang joins me later to preview our front pages this week, in addition to his look back on this day in history. And, of course, Kevin Coleman has a look at your forecast, and later on, a Nutmeg Sports update. But first, in Bridgeport, the former AGI Rubber Company building on Stratford Avenue was the site of a massive fire Wednesday afternoon. HAN's John Kovach was on the scene. The Connecticut Post reports that smoke spread across Interstate 95 southbound and northbound in layers, varying in shades of gray leading up to the area of that fire. Traffic built up on East Main Street and on the surrounding side streets as vehicles maneuvered through the smoke and around blocked off roads. Bridgeport Police, Fire and Marine units responded to the blaze shortly after 4 p.m. The building was reportedly vacant at the time of the fire and the police and fire departments had vehicles stationed throughout the area blocking off streets. And in other news, a 15-year-old teen stole a City of Ansonia car on Wednesday morning, according to police, leading officers on a dangerous pursuit. This all started around 9.40 yesterday when police responded after a gold Saturn VU owned by the City of Ansonia and used by the Blight officer had been stolen on 4th Street. Now the vehicle did have the keys in the ignition at the time. Officers were able to locate the vehicle traveling south on North Main Street toward East Main Street. Officers continued to try to stop the car and it continued to flee, eventually driving to the end of the street behind Valley Electric and climbing the flood wall. The vehicle then continued north along the top of the flood wall and entered onto the Metro North Railroad tracks rail bed. The vehicle continued along the tracks and almost struck a Metro North crew working on the railway. The vehicle then fled along the tracks and became disabled. When officers finally located the car, the suspect was gone, but officers continued to search the area and saw a male matching the description on North Main Street. Officers from Derby, Seymour, and Sonia, and Metro North formed a perimeter in the area, and eventually officers surrounded a building and used canine officers as well that entered and a short time later located the male matching that description. Since he is 15 years old, his name is being withheld, but he faces several charges, including larceny and reckless endangerment. He was transported to a juvenile detention center. And in other news, according to the News Times, several families are homeless and some businesses closed after a fire ripped through a mixed-use building in the heart of downtown Bethel early Thursday morning. HAN's Brian Hafley was on the scene this morning as fire crews tallied the damage. The three-alarm blaze at 178 Greenwood Avenue broke out shortly after 1 in the morning, and it was battled by Bethel firefighters along with crews from Brookfield, Dodgington, Redding, and Danbury, according to Bethel Fire Marshal Tom Galliford. It took a about three hours to knock down that blaze. The apartments on the upper floors were burnt and damaged with smoke, officials said, and the Red Cross has temporarily relocated multiple families. One resident and two firefighters were reportedly injured. And Darien police are investigating a bank robbery reported at Chase Bank at 165 Neroton Avenue. Witnesses told officers that a black man entered the bank at about 1 p.m. and passed a note to a teller demanding money. The note implied that the male had a firearm, but no weapon was ever displayed. The suspect was given cash and immediately exited the bank without incident. The man was last seen getting into a vehicle parked in a lot adjacent to the bank on Heights Road. The vehicle was described as a white sedan, possibly bearing New Jersey license plates. The Darien Police Detective Bureau responded and processed the scene, and detectives are actively working with the FBI in an attempt to identify that suspect whose picture was captured on surveillance cameras. Darien Police are also asking anyone with information to contact their Detective Bureau at 203-662-5330. Now, interestingly, Westport police are investigating a similar incident, looking for a bank robbery suspect. The Detective Bureau is looking for information into the identity of this suspect who robbed the TD Bank on July 2nd. He was described as a black male, about six foot one, and with a heavy build and a scruffy beard. He was wearing a Chicago Bulls hat at the time, and if anyone recognizes him, they can contact the Westport police at 203-341-6080. 
And the group of six Stratford Town Council members opposed to increasing taxes will host a special meeting tonight to discuss a budget proposal for the 2017-2018 fiscal year. Now, whether one passes or withstands another mayoral veto is another question. The special session will start at 6 p.m. Thursday at Town Hall in the Council Chambers. It's an extraordinary step for councillors to take as Town Council Chairman usually calls the meetings. The council members will discuss a $219.49 million spending plan, similar to the one proposed by Mayor John Harkins at a July 5th meeting that was defeated in a 7-3 vote. You can get a lot more on that story at StraffordStar.com. And after a string of miscommunication and literal misfires surrounding this year's 4th of July celebration at Darien High School, the town's planning and zoning commission is wondering if the process for the town's fireworks needs to be formalized in the future. Now, members of the fireworks committee and the board of selectmen arrived at the high school on July 1st, the scheduled day of the event, to find that a three to four foot trench had been dug in front of the stands at the high school stadium, blocking access to the public. The trench had been dug earlier in the week as part of the field lights installation project at the stadium. Now, while the fireworks were postponed until July 2nd due to weather, the fireworks committee had not been informed about the trench prior to that weekend. Now, during the course of the fireworks show on Sunday night, flammable materials from the fireworks burned through a double line tarp at the high school's East Stadium, causing damage to the field's turf. Now, while the cost of the damage has not been fully estimated, that turf installation was completed in 2016 and cost approximately $1.75 million. Funds for the turf field at DHS were contributed by the Darien Athletic Foundation. And there's a lot more on that story at DarienTimes.com. But let's switch gears now, throw it over to Kevin Coleman for a look at the forecast. Kevin. Thank you, Kate. We have sunny skies right now in Shelton, Connecticut, but we're going to see some clouds developing through the afternoon. Thunderstorms likely in the later part of the afternoon during your commute home. It's going to be a high around 89 tonight. Scattered thunderstorms will continue throughout the night overnight as well below of 62 tomorrow rain showers early with an overcast skies later in the day high around 70 saturday is gonna be cloudy skies early followed by partial clearing slight chance of a rain shower throughout that mid to late afternoon time it's gonna be high around 82 and on sunday it's gonna be absolutely gorgeous sunny and a high of 83. That'll do it for your weather update. Kate, back to you. All right. Thanks so much, Kevin. Well, we're going to step out for a break. And when we come back, Donald Dane joins us to take a look back on this day in history. Kevin has your Nutmeg Sports update and there's more local news after this. Celebrate summer with fresh made-to-order picnic boxes from Walter Stewart's Market. We have delicious summery selections from buttermilk fried chicken to grilled lemon chicken kebab, grilled shrimp Caesar salad wraps, or lobster salad rolls. Our easy-to-carry picnic boxes come with your choice of a meal, as well as a dessert, beverage, and utensils. Order online for simple pickup options. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, New Canaan, and online at stewartsmarket.com. I can't believe it. Well, Dad, you did it. You sold 160 cars. Ready to go back upstairs now? I think it's time. I wonder how the boys are making out in their new office. Not what I had in mind, Kyle. What, Dad? Maybe we should retire. Right now, lease a 2017 Rogue S for only $139 a month. Isn't it time you got Millerized? At Pure Bar Ridgefield, our tried and true method can shape every body and fit any schedule. Pure Bar is a total body workout using the ballet bar to perform small, isometric movements which burn fat, sculpt muscles, and create long, lean physiques. Sweat away the day and get lost in the music. Pure Bar Ridgefield, located at 86 Danbury Road. Like us on Facebook at Pure Bar Ridgefield. If you've ever thought about owning a motor coach or learning about what it's like to travel the open road in superior style and comfort, then contact Dave's RV Center in Danbury, Connecticut. Offering the best quality Class A motorhomes from Newmar, travel trailers and fifth wheel lines from Surveyor, and a toy hauler line from Work and Play. Choose from Newmar's Gas Line, Base Star and Canyon Star, or from Newmar's Diesel Line, Ventana and Dutch Star. And with unparalleled service and maintenance, Dave's RV is committed to keeping you and your motor coach safely on the road and enjoying it to the fullest. Stop by their showroom, 2 Industrial Plaza Road, Danbury, Connecticut, or call 877-483-3866. 
If you want a new experience in car buying? Step Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram with one of the largest inventories of new two- and four-door Wranglers. We are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Come visit our new Ram Truck Center. Browse our websites, scapchryslerjeep.com or scapdodge.net to find the new Jeep, Chrysler Dodge car, minivan, or Ram truck you've been looking for. Just two miles from both I-95 or the Merritt Parkway exit 44. Save thousands right now at the Summer Clearance Event. Going on now through July 31st. If you're watching this broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached more than 2 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Welcome back to this July 13th edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Time to throw it over to Donna Lang to take a look back on this date in history. Don. Well, Kate, it was a dark day in New York. First, though, we go to 1923. The Hollywood sign is dedicated in Hollywood Hills, Los Angeles. Now, it originally read Hollywood Land, as you can see there, but the last four letters were dropped after the renovation in 1949. The sign was originally intended to stay there on the hillside for just 18 months. It was an advertisement for housing development. The sign has on occasion been altered with permission, most notably reading Hollywood when Pope John Paul II visited, and then also Hollyweed when California decriminalized marijuana. 1972, Carol Rosenblum and Robert Ursay trade their football teams. Uh, Ro Rosenblum owned the Colts, Ursay the new owner of the Rams. It's actually more accurate to say they traded offices since no players, staff, or equipment moved. Rosenblum, the big winner in the trade, he got the California lifestyle his wife wanted, and he avoided paying capital gains on, uh, he, uh, that he would have paid had he actually sold the Colts to buy the Rams. The big losers, the fans in the two cities, both of them would lose their teams in the next couple of decades. 1985, the Live Aid Benefit concert takes place in London and Philadelphia and some other venues such as Moscow and Sydney. The 16-hour concerts raised $127 million for famine relief in Africa. Organizer Bob Geldof would be knighted by Queen Elizabeth for his efforts. Finally, now we go to New York City, 1977, for this. What happened was this. Up in northern Westchester, lightning storms had uh, hit the power lines, not the plant, but the power lines from Indian Point, number three, which is one of the big nuclear generators that Con Ed maintains on the Hudson. It put out those power lines and had an excess load at the time because of the air conditioning and what what's not tonight. What and this, of course, acted as a kind of a tripping system. They tried to cut power back and it wouldn't work. Finally, they had to cut off the entire system in order to save the generator. So everything is out. Westchester all the five boroughs of New York. As you heard there in the news uh, footage, uh, New York plunged into darkness as lightning causes a 24-hour power outage. There were nearly 4,000 arrests and 500 police officers injured as some New Yorkers took the opportunity to loot and burn parts of the city. There is one activity, though, that uh, legendarily New Yorkers were said to engage in, but they actually didn't. Despite the urban legend, no evidence of a mini baby boom the following year. Uh, sure, they couldn't watch Barney Miller, but consider the blackout did strike during a historic heat wave and everyone's air conditioner stopped working at the same time. That is your look back in history for today, July 13th, and I'm Donna Ling. All right, thanks for that, Don. <laughs> <laughs> in other local news, Shelton's mayor of 26 years, Mark Loretti, raised nearly $145,000 in his first three months of fundraising for his 2018 gubernatorial campaign. Loretti's fundraising efforts put him $105,000 short of earning the $250,000 required to receive $1.4 million in public financing. $225,000 of that quarter million dollar goal must be raised from in-state donors. Now, the mayor said he's pleased with the amount his campaign is raised from April 1st to June 30th. In 2014, Loretti raised more than $100,000 for his second run for governor, but did not receive enough votes during the state GOP convention to qualify for for the party's primary. All right, let's throw it back to Kevin Coleman now for a Nutmeg Sports Update. Kevin. 
Thank you, Kay. We'd like to thank again for all for the both guests we had on during yesterday's Nutmeg Sports Show. We had Paul Carcutera, ESPN lacrosse analyst, and again, a huge thank you to Mike Buswell and his four players from the Trumbull 14 and under Babe Ruth All-Star team for coming in live in studio. You can go back to live.han.network to watch that episode again because it was a lot of fun, and those players were having a lot of fun in the studio. And speaking of the 14 under All-Star tournament, last night, Waterford, they defeated Stanford 2-1 to one in that tournament. That that means Trumbull, that team we had on yesterday during Nutmeg Sports, they will take on Stanford tonight. If Trumbull is able to win this game tonight, they will clinch a spot in the state final against Waterford this weekend. Coming up at 2 p.m. At, on Nutmeg Sports, say it'll be myself and Joe Mixie. We'll be joined by my for, former soccer coach, Phil Bergen, of the Richfield High School Boys Varsity Soccer Team. We're going to get a preview of the upcoming fall season with him as well. We'll get you caught up in other local and national news stories around the sports area. That'll do it for your Nutmeg Sports Update. Kate, back to you. All right. Sounds like a great show at 2 o'clock. Thanks so much, fun, yeah. Kevin. Thanks. All right. It was busy yesterday in here. <laughs> it was very busy. It was yeah. a lot going on. But like we said, those those four players were having a lot of fun and yeah. got to talk to them about what their favorite players were around the Major yeah. League Baseball and why they love baseball. So they had a lot of fun in the studio. It was very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, back to local news. A media firestorm hit when conservative co-host Joe Scarborough of MSNBC's Morning Joe said he is changing part party affiliation. But New Canaan's Republican first selectman Rob Malazzi says he expects Scarborough to support him at the New Canaan Republican caucus on July 18th. Criticizing Republicans for not standing up to President Donald Trump, Scarborough, a New Canaan resident, announced on Tuesday that he would renounce the Republican Party to become independent. Now, candidate for re-election Malazzi said he's not worried that his celebrity supporter will miss the caucus. Malazzi said to the New Canaan advertiser, I talked with Joe and he assured me he's going to be a Republican through the caucus and that he's looking forward to supporting me and Nick Williams. There's more on that story at ncadvertiser.com. And Maury Sendak, the late author and illustrator of Where the Wild Things Are, who lived in Ridgefield, has left behind an unpublished book that's set to be published in the fall of 2018 by HarperCollins. Presto and Zesto in Limbo Land was created by Sendak and lifelong friend Arthur Yorinks, who announced the book's release last week. Yorinks said nearly 20 years ago, Maurice and I, inspired by our friendship, conceived this book about two friends making their way in a very mixed up world. According to The Guardian, the book was found Found by Lynn Caponera, manager of the Sendak estate and president of the Maury Sendak Foundation in his Ridgefield residence. There's more on that story at theridgefieldpress.com. And in other news, Connecticut's Beardsley Zoo debuted its newest exhibit renovation this summer, a large viewing window and sheltered wooden platform for viewing the rarest big cats in the world, the Amor Tiger. The Amor Tiger leopards are critically endangered with fewer than 30 animals left in the wild, 66 fewer than is needed to ensure the survival of the species, and only 176 in captivity worldwide. And you can get a lot more on that new viewing window at any of our HAN Network news sites. We're going to step out for a break, and when we come back, Donald Ang joins me, and we're going to preview the front pages of our HAN Network newspapers this week after this. Want a new experience in car buying? No aggravation, no confrontation, just answers to all your questions. Scap Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, car buying the way you want it to be. With one of the largest selections of new two- and four-door Jeep Wranglers available, we are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Located in Fairfield, Connecticut, we're easy to get to. Just two and a half miles off the Merritt Parkway, exit 44 via Route 58 South. Save thousands right now at the Summer Clearance Event. Going on now through July 31st. You don't have to go far for authentic Neapolitan cuisine and renowned wood fire pizza. Pizzeria Loretano of Bethel is a contemporary Italian bistro specializing in authentic wood fired brick oven pizza Napolitana. Pizzeria Loretano was named one of America's top 1,000 Italian restaurants in 2008 by Zagat and recommended by Jane and Michael Stern on National Public Radio's Splendid Table. Located close to the Bethel Cinema, we focus on quality and our food is always made to order. Join us for live jazz Sundays from 6 to 8. Find our schedule, menu, and more at PizzeriaLoretano.com and like us on Facebook. At InSports Trumbull, the game is always on inside. Registration is now open for our fitness training programs for high school athletes. The InSports Performance Center is offering blast speed classes, athletic functional movement assessments, and both men's and women's elite speed and strength training. Our premier programs help bring athletes to the next level. Call 203-268-1214 for more information 
like and follow us on Facebook. School's out, the weather is hot, and the fish are biting. Whether you're heading to the beach or out on a boat, stop in at the dock shop before you go to fill your beach bag or tackle box with everything you'll need for fun in the sun. A new beach cover-up, some sunscreen, or just some bait, the dock shop has you covered from either location. 51 Tokenique Road, Dairy N, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport. And yes, you heard that right. Bait is now available in Darien and Westport. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, dockshop.com. I'm Tracy Masella, a licensed clinical social worker at Silver Hill Hospital in New Canaan. Join me each month as we talk with experts on the front lines of the treatment of mental health and addiction. Straight Talk with Tracy, a Silver Hill Hospital production, airs at 12 p.m. on the second Thursday of each month here on the HAN Network. Welcome back to this Thursday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. John Kovach off today, so our Trumbull Times editor Donald Ang joins me to preview our front pages this week out today. Don, what are you looking at first? Well, I have the Easton Courier here, and uh, the, the top story, uh, fairly disturbing one, that the former longtime custodian at Samuel Staples School has been arrested on child pornography charges. So that is uh, obviously the very big news in, um, in Easton. Also, some residents are petitioning to overturn the results of a referendum in town, and also Barlow students seeking to uh, teach English to some low-income adults, so some volunteer work in the community by some Joel Barlow students in Easton. All right, well, I'm taking a look at the Ridgefield Press, and for the most part, some good news over in Ridgefield, including a $1.6 million surplus for the town. Uh, there is some road work going on on Route 7 and 35, two bridges, different jobs causing some traffic headaches there. But a great feature on the flower lady, Spencer Moore, she takes care of those beautiful baskets of flowers uh, in downtown Ridgefield. Kind of an in-depth look at her and a school bus driver connecting with local families. So more on that in the Ridgefield Press. Don? I have the Stratford Star here, and the top Top news, for, and as it has been for the last month really, is the ongoing lack of a budget in Stratford. The council met twice more uh, and failed to compromise. They failed to pass a budget again in two meetings since Independence Day. Uh, also, sort of related news, uh, Alan Llewellyn will not seek a second term on the Stratford Town Council. You know, can you, can you blame him? And uh, finally, a New York man char charged with attempted murder after Stratford police say he assaulted his former girlfriend with a knife, a 19-year-old Brooklyn, New York man under arrest in Stratford. And then finally, a little bit of a nicer note there, you know, the ongoing uh, outdoor concert series in Stratford. It's always a nice thing in the summertime, and all the, a lot of these towns have these outdoor concert events. So uh, that is the Stratford Star for this week. All right, taking a look at the Trumbull Times, Don, your paper, and just, uh, wow, the photograph of this tree branch on a car in this car accident, very disturbing. Uh, but this happened Friday, downpours creating some dangerous situations in town. And also police responding to two dangerous 911 calls within minutes of each other Saturday. Uh, and Herbst pulling the town from a state coalition. We also have an update on that former Trumbull Board of Education member and a state Board of Ed member. He has pled guilty to four DUIs. More on that in the Trumbull Times. And first selectman Tim Herbst closing in on his election funds goal. I have the Shelton Herald, and uh, the top story is a really, really cute story. A Shelton grandmother has turned into an unsuspecting YouTube sensation. <laughs> she and her grandson just make these, uh, uh, just make these indescribably cute videos yes. uh, that, that, are, that are online, and you can actually see some of them on the Shelton Herald website at uh, sheltonherald.com. Also, much like first selectman Tim Herbst, Shelton Mayor Mark Loretti closing in on his $250,000 fundraising goal, uh, raising about $150,000 in just the last couple of months. And finally. Uh, a new outdoor pavilion going up at the Jones Family Farm, one of the big attractions in Shelton. And also a really nice story, uh, the, the free trips to, to the National World War II memorials. This is a, a group, it's called... Um, uh, it's a group that brings World War II veterans to mm. Washington, D.C. They have, like, you know, charter flights and everything. They bring them down. It's really first-class accommodation wow. for some of these World War II veterans, bringing them down there. So uh, a very, a very informative and interesting Shelton Herald this week. All right. Taking a look at the Milford Mirror, um, there a zone change denied. This zone change would have allowed the construction of a proposed 168-unit apartment complex for Plains Road near the Boston Post Road. That was a close vote, 5-4. to four. Uh, Also... 
Malloy killing a housing bill. More on that. And a junkyard fire was the big a junkyard fire was the big news this week in Milford. There's actually some video of that on MilfordMirror.com. Teens working to raise awareness of a rare disease and controversial Seaside Avenue plan approved. Uh, in Reading this week, we have news of uh, one of the local residents competing in the North American Bridge Championships. It's, uh, you know, I found that story riveting, I actually, when I read it this morning. Uh, also, a, a real push in town to curb unsafe driving in town. Uh, you know, a lot of the little small, windy roads in town that uh, people are really making a concerted effort to, to make them a little bit safer there, particularly with a lot of the children in town. And uh, the institution in town, the Reading Roadhouse, Closing its doors uh, after uh, after de after decades in business, it was really an institution in town, uh, the place to go for for music and for um, you know for for pub food and thing, drink things yes. like that. Um, the Reading Roadhouse, kind of a sad story there. That is closing its doors. All right, taking a look at the Wilton Bulletin, some zoning flaw concerns have come to light recently, and these could go back years, but the statute of limitations capping damage potentially there. And really a great story, a Wilton man honored in New Canaan as a hero for pulling someone from a burning car. And uh, Trackside Gardens providing a wholesome outlet for learning for local students. And bridge expert Michael Hess is heading for a bridge championship. Good luck to him. Yeah, partnering, partnering with the Ridgefield, with the Redding guy, actually. They, uh, oh, very good. And uh, in Darien, we have uh, the Board of Ed is going on there, is going on retreat there to try and kind of get, get, become a, a more cohesive unit. Darien also adopting Open Gov for its financial reporting. A bit of an interesting story. The, uh, a, lo a local family is actually uh, complaining about the Darien school system. Now, this is interesting because Darien traditionally is one of the top school systems in the state, if not the, the, the nation, and many people move to Darien specifically to put their kids into the Darien schools, including this family here who uh, spoke to the Darien Times about mm -hmm. their disappointment with the school system. You can check that out at dariantimes.com. All right, taking a look at the Weston Forum, um, Animal Control is getting an increased number of calls about fishers, not Yankee fishermen's, <laughs> fisher cats. Uh, they weasel their way into backyards. Oh, nice work. You like no that? Yeah, I yeah. did like that. It is Thursday, Yankee Fisherman Day. Um, also, police reporting a busy year, a lot of activity, but not much of it criminal activity in Weston. Mosquitoes test positive for West Nile virus, unfortunately, and uh, just some farmer market, farmer's market fun uh, photos on the front page. Uh, well, on the Monroe Courier's front page, we have, first of all, we have some road work set to begin at the intersections of Route 110, that's Shelton Road, and 111, that's the Monroe Turnpike. A uh, very, you know, very busy intersection. Some state road work there going to be uh, ca causing some traffic problems for the foreseeable future. Ultimately, it'll be better when it's done, so they say, but, uh, you know, certainly you want to avoid the area if possible. Also, the annual Firefighters Carnival is uh, this weekend, so that's going to be also always a big thing in Monroe. And I got to show solidarity here with the Monroe Dads. Group of forty <laughs> some group of forty somethings there rocking out uh, at, at the Wolf Park concert series. So way to go, guys! Yeah, awesome. All right, taking a look finally at the new Canaan Advertiser. The health risks of cell towers. A plethora of imperfect. Data. This is something we hear about in many towns when it comes to putting up cell towers. So more in-depth story this week. Also gas coming to town and swim team on the rise at Waveney Pool, as well as a preview about New Canaan's GOP caucus. All right. Now, Don, thank you so much for joining me. Anytime, Kate. Thanks. Now, it's still a very busy day. Uh, in, coming up at 1 p.m. is Yankee Fisherman. It's an incredible story of survival. John Kovach talks with a man who survived falling off of a lobster boat and staying afloat in the North Atlantic until rescue crews found him. We also, of course, have Nutmeg Sports coming up at 2 o'clock. And up next, this month's episode of Straight Talk with Tracy, it focuses on LGBTQ issues. That's coming up at noon. We're going to wrap things up here on your coffee break, but we will be back tomorrow at 11. See you then.